Welcome back to Snippet Coder and we are back with another video. In this video, we will learn how to create Node.js REST API documentation like a pro using Swagger. So this is our Swagger application and here we have our application name Then we have the version of the API. Then we have the base URL and here the description of the application and here the link for the license. Then here we have the schema. Then here we have all the endpoints for our API. First one is a get request. Then we have the post request. Then we have the get request for selected product. Then we have the put request for updating the product. Then we have the delete API. And here we have the model also. Inside that we have the parameters. If we click here to execute, it will give us the data from the database itself. Same is with that create API also for that create product API. Here we have to put the product name, then we have to put a description price image we can select here. If we click on the execute, it will create the product in the database. So before starting the video, if you are new to our channel, subscribe to the channel by click on the subscribe button, click the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Thank you. First of all, we have to add the package here for the swagger and we will go to the terminal. And here we will write npm i swagger hyphen ui hyphen express hyphen s. It will save in the package.json file. So here that package has been added. So now we will go to one link to see that how that swagger will work and the basic structure of the swagger json and all so this is the swagger website for that basic structure so we can write the open api definition the xaml or json file so we are going to use the json in our application so if you are not aware of that swagger definitions of that format and everything you can check this link so i will put the link in the description to see that how that tags which tags are required and all so we require that path tag and that will be used for defining our endpoint in the api then we have the parameters and that parameters are that you can say that query or that parameter which are coming in the link that we have to define here then we have the request body here in the request body we will define that if we are doing the api for the create product or update product and then there we are just providing the request body either in the form data or either in the json then we have the responses uh, responses is like whatever that uh, api we are hitting and whatever the return of that api we are getting that we have to show in that swagger so now let's move to the code part to indicate the swagger in our node.js api so first of all we have to create one file here and we will name it as a swagger dot json file and here we have to create some the entry and i'm just going to copy paste that those entry so first one is the swagger version we are going to use that is 2.0 then we have the information about our api and that is we are having that uh, version then we have the title of the api then we have the description here then we have the license here if it is mit we will put name as the mit and the url we will put here then we have the host url and the host url will be the url of our api then we have the base path and we will put slash here for the base path then we have the tags here and the tags we can put multiple tags here we are using here one tag that is name as a products in the description we are putting as a product api then we have the schemes here and we can put http or also if we are our application is in https we can put here https also and here we have to define that what we have to consume here we are consuming here application slash json content type and return we are producing that our application json return so now we will go to our index.json file and here we have to integrate our swagger so that whenever we open the application we can also get the swagger documentation also with that and here we have to define constant swagger ui is equal to require swagger ui express then we have our swagger document is equal to require and here we have to link this json file dot slash swagger dot json so now we will go to line number 25 and here we will put app dot use and here we have to provide a link from where that swagger will be open and here we will put slash api hyphen docs and if you want to change this name you can change it to any other name also then here we have to put swagger ui dot serve and then here we have to put swagger ui dot setup and here we have to put swagger document so our swagger is integrated with our node.js api so now we will run the application to see that swagger documentation is working or not and after that we will integrate the endpoint and everything in the documentation and here we will enter node mode space js it will run the server so now we are getting a database connected ready to go so now we will open the browser so here we are getting our swagger integration in our api you can see here we are getting shopping app crud version we are getting here then we have the base url and base url we can also change here 
we have just copy paste from the code now here we can change that base url also so here we can put localhost 4000 and we will save it now we will come back to our browser and we will reload the application here you can see that base url has been changed to 4000 then we have the description then we have the license here then here we are getting the tags here and inside the tag we are going to create the endpoints and all so now let's move to the node.js application for integrating of these tags and all So now we will modify our swagger.json file. So here we will add one tag here, paths. And here we have to define all our endpoints and all. We have API slash products. And here we have get request. And also we have post request. Inside the get request, we have to define some more tags here. First one will be tags. And the tags we are going to use is, this will be the array and we can use multiple tags here. And the tag we are using here products. And this will be the same tag which we have defined here. Then we have the summary here. And we will put here get all products. Then we have the parameters. If any API having any parameters that we have to define inside our parameter tag. And this will be also the array. Inside that we will create the object here. Inside the object we have variable of name. Name will be product name. And here we have to define that uh, parameter will be coming in how is it in the query string or is it in our URL itself in and here we have to define query because that we have to capture from the query string. Then we have to tell is it required parameter or not and we will put here false because this is not required parameter. Then we have the description here and we will put here product name and we can also put here search by product name. Then here we have to define the type here and the type will be string type and make sure we are putting here everything in the lowercase in the type else it will give some error this one is the description after that parameter tag we have the response and here we have responses we can have multiple response but here we are just putting here 200 response we can even put here 400 response also as per the requirement we can do here for the 200 response we are putting the description here okay then we have the schema here the schema we will define here later on so for the schema we are putting the reference here that will become from the definitions like for that responses we have to respond back to the user this definition reference in the reference you have to put here dollar sign then we have the hash slash definitions slash service response and that response we will create here it will be definitions after our part tag, we will put here definitions. Here we have definitions and this will be used for showing the model and all. Here we have that product model and here we have the required field which are in our model required fields. Here we have product name, then we have the underscore ID, then we have the product price. These are the required field. Then we have the properties here. First one is the underscore ID type will be integer. Then we have the unique items true and the unique item we are putting here true because this id is the order generated id then we have the product name and here we have the type and the type is string type then we have the description here product description the type we are having here string then we have the product price and here we have the type integer then we have the last variable that is product image and the type we have here string after this model, we have our service response, service responses. This will the model which we are going to return in our responses here. And we will put here response only. Here we have the properties. The first variable will be the message. The type will be string and we will format the document here. Then we have the data here and the data type we are returning here array. Then we have the items here and the item we are returning here reference slash defi nations slash product so what we did here we have created the path here and inside the part we have put the endpoint that is api slash products and here we had added the get request inside the get request we are having the tags product summary we are putting here get all products then we have the parameters here and the parameter we are taking from the query string here and we are putting it as a required false then we have the description search by product name then we have the type here string type of this product name then we have the response here and the status code 200 we are returning here description we are putting here okay and the schema we are returning here service response and 
and that will be coming in our definitions and definition we have the product model and we are putting here that required fields then we are putting here properties here then we have the service response here that we are having two variables first in the message type of string then we have the data here type of array then we have the items here and the item we are returning here array of this product here so now let's run the application to see that api is working that swagger is coming for this get request or not here we will reload the application so here you can see we are getting the product here product api here we are getting the post request because we have just added a tag here but we have not added any other information that we will cover later on and here if you see here we are getting the this tag one inside that tag we are getting here get request for api slash product and here we are getting a summary here if we click here you can see here we are getting that parameters here product name search by product name we can put here that product name if we Required. and here you can see we are getting the response here code we are getting a 200 for description we are getting okay and this is the response we are getting which we have added in the definition message of string type then we have the data here in the array format and here we are written the product model so here if i click on the try it out and here if i click on the execute you can see here it hit the database and we are getting all the data in the from the database in our ui and that is very easy now swagger the main purpose swagger is if we are getting any api rest apis but we don't know how to create a front end and all we can just test our api with the help of the swagger and also we can have the proper documentation if we want to give this api documentation to our front-end developer or the mobile developer that we can give this api link and all for the documentation so now let's move further and we will complete our post request also in the post request also we have to put a tag here tags and if we put here that products and then this post request also come in inside that product tag only if we save here and now if i show to in the browser so here if i reload the application so now you can see here that post request is now coming in the product tag by default if we not put any tag it will show the default tag there and here we will put the summary here and here we will put create product api and then we have the properties here and here we will put parameters because in the post request we are going to use the form data for that we have to use the parameters here also if we are doing the normal body request also that also we can put here in the parameter data only thing we have to change here in the tag let me show you the name will be product name then we have the operator and here we have form data so if we want to get the parameter from the body we have to put here body if we are using the form data we have to put here form data so in our case we are using a form data because we are using the file uploading also then we have the description here we will put here product name then we have the required we will make it as a true then we have the type here we will put a string we will just copy this and we will paste here we will paste one more time and here also we will put once again and we will change it to description here we will rename to product description and the required we will make it as a false then here we have the product price and here we are using type as a integer and we are making it as a required true and then we have our product image and here we will change it to product image and here we have type as a file because we are using a upload file and all and the response we will copy just this response and we will paste here so now let's reload the application to see here i will reload the application if i click on the post request here you can see we are getting product name product description product price then we have the product image and here we are getting that response here and if we create any data here and if i put here test product then we have the description here test then we have the price here 500 if if i not put any uh, product price and a description it is coming as a wrong we have to modify it and we will make it as a price and here in the product image we will make it as a required false and i will reload the application here and here now if i click on a try it out and if i click on execute you can see here we are getting the validation error also and the product name we'll, we are putting here test description we are not putting anything and here in the product price we are putting here 34 and if i click on execute you can see here the product has been created here and this is a test product so now if i go to the get request to see that product has been created or not if i click on the execute you can see here we are getting this product that is product name test and the product price is 34 
that is created now just now so now let's move further to have the last step that is the put and the delete request also and also we are having a models here you can see here we are getting the product model and here we have id product name description price image then we have the service response inside the that we are having message then we have the data as a product type in the array format so now let's move further to have the put and the delete request also So now we will create our put and the delete request here and for that we have to add one more path here first one is our ip slash product we will close this one and we will add one more here we'll put here slash api slash products and slash curly brackets and here we will put the id here because in that delete in our update request we are just passing our id for the product id and here also we will put for more for that getting the product details also api that also we can add here and the parameter is same for every request and here we have parameters and here we have the array here inside the array we will put here the object here name id and here we have the operator from where we have to pick our id and we are picking it from our path that here from here that path if we are picking from the query string we will put here query then we have the required we will make it as a true because that id is required then we have the description here product id and then we have the type here string after that we will create the get request here and the get request we are going to use for our getting the product detail here we'll put the tags here the tag will be products then we have the summary here we'll put here get product details by product id then we have the response here the response will be the same we will copy that response and we will just paste here we will save it and now let's see in the browser also here we will reload so now you can see here we are getting the product api also and that we are getting from our id and here if i click on the tryout and if i click on execute we are getting the error we have to pass the id here and the id we have to pick from here we can pick any id here and we will go here and we will put here and here we will click on execute now you can see here we are getting the data for that particular id here so that means our this one that is product based on the id is also working so now let's move further to have the another two method that is put request and a delete request here we will copy this one and we will paste here for the delete request tag will be same and the description we will put here delete product by id the rest of the thing will be same here we can also check in the browser also here we will refresh the page now you can see here we're getting the api for the delete also and if we, we can get the id from here we will just remove this test one we will copy this and we will come here we will click on try it out if we click on execute it will give the error for that id that is required we will paste here now we will click on execute it will give us the success message that means this data has been deleted so now let's verify it we will go here in the get request and here we click on the execute now you can see here that that data is not coming here we are getting some other data for the test that is product price 50 but the previous one which we have created is for the test and the price for that is 34 the id we have added is this, this one so that is not coming here so this id is not coming here that means the delete request also working fine so now let's move further to have the last method that is our put request for updating the data for that we will go to the code and here we will go to our post request and we will just copy that code and we will paste here and summary we will change it to update and here instead of putting the post we will put here put request and here we have the summary update product api then we have our parameters product name product description everything will be same so now let's see in the browser also here we will reload the application so now you can see here we are getting the put request also and here we are getting everything product name description price image and the id that is required and on the basis of that id it will update the product in the database so i hope you like the video you have understand how to test our rest api with the help of the swagger and all so for that you don't need to depend on any front-end application or any mobile application to test your api you can just integrate this swagger in your application and you can easily test the APS on the go. So I hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share. I will come back soon with another awesome video. Thank you for watching the video.